Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, why does 0 factorial equal 1? I've received a number of requests for this video. I've only taken so long to do it because I already typed out a lengthy explanation in the comments on my last factorial video, but I know a lot of people have wanted a video on it, so we're finally getting to it today. I'm going to do at least one more video on this topic, explaining some more reasons why 0 factorial is equal to 1, but in this video I'm going to go over what I think is the most important reason, as well as a less mathematical explanation that you might like. We know that 0 factorial is equal to 1, and this is the big question. Why the heck is this the case? Well, before we get into any explanation, I just want to emphasize that the factorial is just a function that mathematicians defined, and we've defined it to be equal to 1 for 0 factorial. So this is not something that can be argued. You can't say, well, I don't think 0 factorial should be equal to 1. It is equal to 1. That is how it's defined. So then the question becomes, why is 0 factorial equal to 1? Why did they choose to define it that way? And that's a very interesting question, and that's what we're talking about today. So as a quick recap, recall that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 1. So n factorial is equal to n times every natural number less than n. And this description of n factorial, of course, doesn't make it clear what 0 factorial should be, since there are no natural numbers less than 0. So let's look at an easy example of factorial. 3 factorial, and that's just equal to 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6. Now, in practical applications, the factorial is just the number of ways we can order this many distinct objects. So 3 factorial is the number of ways to arrange 3 distinct objects, and that number is 6. So let's say we had 3 objects, the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Here is one way that we could order them. Here's a second way. Here's a third way. Here's a fourth way, here's a fifth way, and finally here is a sixth way. So these are all six ways to arrange the three objects 1, 2, and 3. So then if the factorial is the number of ways there are to arrange a given number of objects, that of course makes us wonder, is there really just one way to arrange zero objects? It seems kind of unclear. So let me present an explanation that may or may not be convincing, but we'll look at it and see what you think. So let's say we've got this big tray, and we are being presented objects on this big rectangular tray. Then whatever objects were presented on this tray, they have to be in some order. That order could be going from leftmost to rightmost, it could be from upmost to lowermost, or the objects could be stacked on top of each other. And you could consider their order as being from lowest to highest, or from highest to lowest. But the point is, if objects are presented to us on this tray, then they have to be in some order already. So what is the total number of ways to order any number of objects? Well, we can think of it as being 1, the way they're originally presented to us, plus every other possible way we could arrange the objects. So, for example, if we're presented these objects, let's say circle, a square, a triangle, and a trapezoid, how many ways could we arrange these four objects? Well, there's the one way that they're already presented to us, circle, square, triangle, trapezoid, and as it so happens, there are 23 other ways we could arrange these objects. You could go through and check for yourself to make sure there's 23. I'm not going to do that here because it would take a minute or two, so I'll leave that to you if you're not convinced but this is equal to 24. So there are 24 total ways to arrange these four objects. The one way they were presented to us, and then the 23 other ways that we could sort them. And of course, that is just equal to 4 factorial. So then, you might see where I'm going with this. Let's clear off the tray, and let's say this is what we're presented. Just zero objects. There's nothing on the tray. How many ways can we arrange zero objects? Well, we already said they have to be presented to us in some order, so there's one order, the way they're presented to us, plus every other way we could arrange them. There is no other way we could arrange them because there are no objects to rearrange. So it's got to be plus zero. So the total number of ways to arrange zero objects has got to be equal to one. There's the way they originally are, and every other way. There are no other ways, so there's only one way. But that's just one way of thinking about it that maybe you find interesting. Let's move on to a more mathematical justification. 
and this explanation focuses on the motive behind defining 0 factorial to be equal to 1. So let's say we have 7 objects, and we want to know how many ways can we select 4 of these 7 objects if order matters. So we've got 4 places to select 4 objects from a total number of 7. Order matters, how many ways can we do this? Well, we know for our first choice, there are seven possibilities. We could choose any one of the seven objects, so seven is what goes in the first spot. Then, for every one of the seven objects we could have chosen for the first place, there are six possible objects we could choose for the second place, because we already selected one, now there's six left. And this is multiplication in here, because for every one of the seven, there are six objects we could choose. And this is going to be multiplication here, because for every one of the seven objects we could choose for the first spot, there are six objects we could choose for the second spot. So there are 42 total ways we could pick these first two objects. Then, continuing naturally, we multiply by 5, because now there are 5 objects left that we could choose for the third spot. And then for the last spot, there are 4 objects left. So we had seven possibilities for our first choice. For every one of those seven first choices we could have made, there are six choices we could make for the second spot. For every one of these 42 choices we could make for the first two spots, there are five choices for the third spot, and so on. So it's seven times six times five times four, which is equal to 840. Now the cool thing is that there is a formula to help us out in this kind of situation. So if we have n objects, and we want to know how many ways can we select k of those n objects if order matters, the number of ways we can do that is equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. The situation we had before was seven objects, and we were picking four of them in some order. So, using the formula to figure out this number, it should be 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 4 factorial. That's just equal to 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which you can see is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that's divided by 3 times 2 times 1. The 3 2 and 1 cancel out, and we are left with 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. So you can see the formula gives us the result we expect. This is the total number of ways to select k objects from a group of n where order matters. So now let's get into the interesting part of this explanation. Let's say we have n objects and we're selecting n of them in some order. How many ways can we do that? Let's think through it first before we try using the formula. So for our first choice, we have n possibilities. There are n objects we could choose first. Then, since we've chosen one, there are n minus one objects left we could pick second. So we have n times n minus one. Then, since we've selected two of the n objects, there are n minus two choices left. This is just like the example we went over before. But remember that we're selecting n of these n objects, so we're selecting all of them. So we're going to keep going, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way until we have only one object left to pick. This is the total number of orders in which we could select n objects from a group of n. And you might notice that this is just equal to n factorial, by definition. So, with all of that said, let's look at the formula again. Let's use the formula to describe what this should be. It should be equal to n factorial divided by n minus n factorial. And that is equal to n factorial divided by 0 factorial. Right there, that's what we're interested in. So we said that this should be equal to n factorial. But in order for this to be equal to n factorial, the denominator has got to be equal to 1, which means that 0 factorial has got to be equal to 1. This has to be true in order for this formula to be true when k is equal to n. So if 0 factorial is equal to 1, then this is equal to n factorial. And this is correct. This is what we want to get from this formula when k is equal to n. And of course, if 0 factorial was equal to 0, then this expression would be undefined. So by saying that 0 factorial is equal to 1, 
we get correct results and we run into fewer problems. And that's the important part here that I want to emphasize. By defining zero factorial to be equal to one, we get correct results and we run into fewer problems. And I think that makes it pretty clear why we would define zero factorial to be equal to one. However, I will say that I don't think this is the most convincing explanation. I'll go over what I think is the most convincing explanation in another lesson. So I hope you'll watch that when it comes out or go check it out now if it's already out at the time you're watching this. But that's it for this lesson. Those are two explanations as to why zero factorial is equal to one. And just to quickly bookmark this point in the channel's life, I want to mention that our 200th video came out yesterday, and we're currently sitting at 778 subscribers. So I want to thank everybody for your support. Thank you all for your nice comments, your kind words, and thank you for sticking with us for 200 videos. It's really awesome. But that's it for today, so I hope this video helped you understand why zero factorial is equal to one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.